Welcome to episode three of the Non-League Show. I'm delighted to be joined by National League, former National League North player of the season and England C, he's made a cap for England C team, Joe Leasley. How are we, mate? Right. Delighted to have you on, mate. How are we? I'm good, Paul. How are you? I'm good, mate. I'm good, mate. Good. good. I've got a funny story to this because the gaffer Turner is obviously, we're touching base about obviously when we're going to do the podcast and, and stuff like that and uh, he's given me your wrong number. So I've texted this bloke, um, sent him a voice note as well, so he's heard my voice saying I want to do a podcast with you um, and then he's ignored me so I've texted him again on the Monday saying oh any update and he's gotten back to me, he's gone, he said I haven't played football in 25, I'll overlay it, he hasn't played football in 25 years and he didn't play above Sunday league level, so I'm thinking it can't be <laughs> Joe Lee's then, can it? It might be me, it might, <laughs> so, uh, might not be as good as him. Yeah, so um, what I'm going to do is Joe, I'm going to show 30 seconds of your highlights, right. I think the majority are at Harrogate, um, but I'm going to overlay here some of your highlights just so people know. Um, what you're about, so we're ready, mate. Yep, sound. So I'll look at it here. Edder at back stick. Did you say that's where you enjoy playing the most out wide? Yeah, to be fair, I've been, you know, at quite a few different positions over my time. I think that's probably been a bit of a downfall of mine. Sometimes I've kind of yeah. played at a year there and everywhere, yeah. to be fair. But yeah, I think just especially at Arrogate, playing on wing every week, it were, that's probably where I played my best stuff as well. Brilliant. Left wing. Yeah. Finish this one. I think this was the best one. Ooh, did you say a deflect, little deflection? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Celebration. No, that was a, that was a tough game to be There fair. we are. And then a few penalties there. But what I want to do is I want to crack on from the start, Joe, obviously, where you started. Um, so would you, which grassroots club did you, did you start with at the start? So grassroots stuff, didn't start playing till you know, eight, nine year old, went in at Scorthorpe Scorpions, yeah, yeah. used to live in Sheffield, came over to Doncaster, um, ended up like my cousin's team was Scorp, so yeah, went down there for a little bit. Brilliant. So obviously, playing grassroots, did you get, you, you didn't, did you get picked up by an academy? Yeah, so it were a centre of excellence back then, Donny, but I think they didn't have like a, a young age group, I don't mm. think they started till like under 11, so we played a couple of years at Sunday League and then they kind of cherry picked a few players from each team mm. and then we like made up Donny Rovers under 11s and then went through yeah. until 16s, until I got released. Fair. So I just want to talk about your route into non-league now, mm -hmm. obviously, so I know at a young age you signed for Winterton, Hi. do you want to quickly talk about your route into non-league? Yeah, so um, kind of got released from Donny at 16, kind of thought I was going to get a youth team contract so I think it was a bit of a surprise to me. Um, got released, disappointed, desperate to be a professional footballer so trialling here, there, yeah. everywhere, you know like how it goes, my dad's taking me up to Newcastle, yeah. Rotherham, all teams, end up getting a handful of no's which kind of was just heartbreaking yeah. thinking to myself you know what am I going to do, that's all I want to do. Um, I was lucky enough that there was an opportunity at Bowlby Academy of Sport that they were doing like a bit of a course yeah. if you went and played football and got an education and because I'd never ever thought about doing all else I was just like I've, I've got to do it because yeah, I've got to yeah. play football. Lucky enough um, I went there, great set of lads, we were a very good team, um, a lot of lads that had been released from clubs and we ended up playing youth teams and stuff like that and we'd beat them, we, we were a good side, um, John Buckley, yeah, uh, yeah. Darrell Pugh, well recognised coaches um, in, in footballing world and they were our managers so really really good experience and that kind of tied in with getting love back for football, enjoying it, um, had quite a good seasons there and went to Scunthorpe through that, wow. um, ended up getting like uh, extended second year yeah, yeah, yeah. trial scholarship whatever they call it, schoolboy. Um, and then that's kind of got released from there at the end of that, didn't get a professional contract and then that's how I dropped into non-league. Um, ended up at Matlock Town yeah. uh, under Mark Atkins and then it kind of just took off from there. Brilliant. So you, you started at Matlock, would you say, was that your first non-league club, Matlock? Yeah, and yeah. Then, yeah did, is that when you moved on to Winterton after that? Yeah, so um, Winterton came about early door, so for, for me, Winterton kind of married in with my college stuff because I was 16, I was a baby. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd been playing like some pub football, so as you can imagine, I'm yeah. thinking I'm at Donny, I'm going to be yeah. next big thing. Thought yeah. I was this well outspoken, thought I was probably better than what I was, and then 
all world came crushing down. Next thing, I'm signing forms for a pub team yeah. in car park, <laughs> playing men's football at Edinburgh yeah. Royals, they were called. And again, great set of lads, loved it. Yeah. Slacky were there and people like yeah, that. Yeah. So it were good. Um, but yeah, uh, Liam Nelthorpe's dad had mentioned to Turns and Senate that, because he was playing at Winston at the time. Yeah. And then I just came down training with them and I was really enjoying it. Yeah. Men's football, couldn't believe it. Like I got the opportunity at 16 year old to do it. And, kind of went into that and ended up playing, I think, pretty much a full season for them at 16. Yeah. Um, so it were unbelievable, valuable experience at that age to be doing it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I just want to quickly go on about, obviously, because obviously I see Turner, obviously his role at Fawn now, he's a bit more behind the scenes, the business side of it. I don't re I don't really understand what he's like as maybe a gaffer. I know Senate with a gaffer there, but he's obviously the assistant manager. What was he kind of like at and Senate? Because I've obviously played under Senate a bit at Fawn and, do you know what I mean? He'd, I don't get on ball with him because yeah. just Matt all shouting at me all the time. But what are them two actually like as a, as a duo, would you say, at Winterton? They were a good duo. They were funny. Um, it was such a funny dressing room, though. We had people like Slacky, Neely, all big characters, yeah. Frosty. Um, it, wore, it wore a really, like, you, you're just fucking pissing yourself yeah. when you went through the door. <laughs> and they were kind of a big part of that. Senate was Senate. He yeah. shouts and yeah. balls, yeah. he, and gets on at you. And uh, he likes everyone to run and yeah. work hard. And... I always remember, I think we played, I think it was Hallam, and like one of my first games that I've come in and we were in the dressing room and we've gone out, I'm starting the game and it was like a basketball game, so we've gone 1-0 down, 1-1, yeah. 2-1 down, 3 Anyway, it comes in at half time and I'd never really seen Turner like this, Turner's is obviously just the nicest guy in the yeah. world, isn't he? So we're just sat there playing and uh, we've come in into the dressing room and we're all sat around the table and Senna's come in and you kind of expecting it, three <laughs> yeah. two down, rah, 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 he's shouting. Yeah. And the next thing turns just gets up and he's like, hey, it's just not fucking good. <laughs> Flips his table. I'm sat there as like a 16 year old kid, so I'm a bit like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I've not spoken, I'm sat there thinking, what's going on? He flips his table, Jugger Orange comes slamming past my head. <laughs> he's just going off, he's going purple in yeah. face. Rah, rah, rah. And we're all just like, I think from that day on, we were like, yeah. He's got a bit of that into yeah. it. Like he can really flip his switch, like, and um, but it would just, it would probably a bit of banter in change room for about yeah. a month after as well for for um, the unexpected head loss, definitely. He did manage one of the games at Fawn when obviously we were our uh, Fawn reserves when they were, and he did because obviously we, we didn't have any. Uh, I think none of gaffers were available or away, and he kind of came and did it, and he drove us down at minibus, and like we were proper dead relaxed to be fair. So I'm thinking, what would he actually have been like as a yeah, as yeah. an assistant manager? But yeah, I'm surprised at that. You know, no, he, he, I'm surprised like at I that. say, both from great guys, yeah. but. Um, Told you if you weren't doing it right. Yeah. So I'm gonna one more thing on Winston. By the way, I want to talk about uh, preseason games. So you played against Hull every time, didn't you? Yeah. Um. So this time you played Hull. I think they were in the Prem, weren't they? Yeah, they were. They were. Uh, it was that year they had like Javier. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, yeah, yeah. I think that was his name. Yeah. They, they they had a good set. Apparently, well, when I was speaking to him, you had an absolute storm in this game. So right. you were playing against top centre half at all City. Probably only one to played me. <laughs> So how old were you at this point when you played against? 16, and maybe. He, he said they were full strength as well, all. Yeah, um, I came, I think I played up front in one of those games or on the wing and I, I do remember having a good game because like Bullard and people like that were playing yeah. in it. So it wore, yeah, they yeah. didn't bring like the Joeys, they brought the yeah, first team. Strong, full um, But yeah, it was, obviously I, like at 16 year old, looking back on it now, I just want to give me a slap around the face because yeah. I went into that dressing room and I was like, I should be playing, I should yeah, be yeah. playing, why not playing? I probably did turn and send it said in, but I would have liked to have played more, but that's just the 16 year old yeah, ambitious yeah. kid that thought he were better than what he was. They probably did the right thing with me, yeah. bringing me off the bench. Yeah, and then, to, to be fair, towards the end, I did kind of get a bit of a spot in the team, but it was more of a, a learning football move for yeah, me rather yeah. than actually that like, I played and scored 50 goals. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Did you move on to Matlock after that? So I, I went into Scunthorpe in my second oh, yeah, year yeah. and then I, when I got released from there I had like a, a, a weird trial, I went to like Bradford out of nowhere, yeah. um, just through the Scunny connection, we, we played him in a bit of a resi game, went there on a trial and the assistant manager invited me back in for pre-season with the first team, did that and then at the end of it he just said listen you, you're not good yeah. enough for League One. Um, but I've got a connection at Matlock, do you want yeah. to come down and, and do that? So I was like, yeah, yeah, sound, and then that's how I kind of started it all off, but that were at 18, yeah, so that would be going yeah. for a first year pro. So straight into Matlock at 18, and that was just like, all guns blazing, you know, proper football, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Did you enjoy your time there? Loved it, loved it. Mark Atkins, um, 
he was great. One of the best managers I've ever played under, to be honest with you. Straight talker, knew his stuff. He'd won Premier League with Blackburn, so you, you just couldn't argue yeah, with him. Played under Kenny Daglish, had a very good career himself, and knew a lot about football. Yeah. Um, but the dressing room was just very non-league. Lads that had done really well. You didn't step out of line. Yeah, there were none yeah, of this like 16-year-old that like kind of a chip on his shoulder. Probably an 18-year-old that had a chip on yeah, his yeah, shoulder. Yeah. So I probably mouthed back sometimes more than what I did. But I got told, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? It wasn't just, oh, Joe was having a tantrum. He yeah. went, shut up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that it kind of stands you in good stead moving forward, like. Yeah, brilliant. So obviously, Matlock as well. I know you had spells at Alfred and, and before you obviously moved on to, to Harrogate for a long period of time. What was it like at Alfred? Obviously, was it a short amount of time you had there? Yeah, so Alfred was good. It was, it was difficult because I don't even... The kind of way my career went on is like, Things shouldn't have happened. Like yeah. I was at Matlock, it was dying out. We want a very good side at the, towards yeah. the end of it. We want playing that much, and then we played a Derbyshire Senior Cup game against Alfred, and they put like a bit of the Joey team out. I've done really well in that game up front. I've been playing left back all season. Gone up front anyway in this game. Scored a couple of goals. Next day, Alfred manager rings me. Really yeah. impressed with you last night. What do you want to do it? And I'm like, um, I don't, I don't know where I am with football. I was going to do some coaching and. Do, yeah. Left Matlock, next thing signed for Alfred, and I jumped three divisions. I'd gone from Evo Stick yeah. to Conference Prem, yeah. um, and then literally did that like on um, a Saturday. Two weeks later, I was starting against Woking, making my debut in Conference National, and it was just like, you know, I know it's, sometimes people think it's a bit cringy, but like name up back at yeah, Shirley, yeah, and yeah. I'd gone from like, you know, getting one out of bag at Matlock yeah, to yeah. name up back at Shirley in Conference Prem, and it was it were a bit surreal because. It probably shouldn't have happened. Yeah. That my, my season certainly didn't warrant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just that one-off game that they went play at, and it, it was just a chance for me. Do you know? What do I mean? reckon that was a big step to take at that point in your, your career? Yeah, massive step because I'll probably play in a position that's not really me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I'd done well in it in a couple of games. I'd gone there, um, you know, kind of found found my feet at Alfred and as a, as a man yeah, really, yeah. and, and as. as has got more experience for them, valuable experience that can kind of stood me in good stead moving forward. But like they quickly realised that I want a striker when yeah. I want scoring any goals yeah. and move me, uh, <laughs> move me positions. So obviously going on to Harrogate, your time at Harrogate Town now. So obviously you spent four years there. Yeah, so four, four, four. Well, this to pay me contracts, longest contract in world. Uh, it's only just r running out this year. Yeah. Um, but I've been away from there on yeah. loads and stuff. But yeah, for five or six really good years. Yeah. So yeah. do you want to quickly talk about how obviously the move to um, to Harrogate came about? Um, obviously moving was it moving on from Alfred and you went straight to Harrogate? Yeah. Do you want so to quickly talk about how it how it came about? Yeah, exactly. Exactly the same. Again, it's kind of all ties in with itself. It's it's been a bit mental and weird, but played against them. Alfred, yeah. and, you know, we're having a good season at Alfred and doing quite well. Played against them. Had a really good game. I remember walking off at pitch and my assistant manager was like, oh yeah, I wouldn't really like you, you know how they yeah. do, people talk and two weeks later, met the manager at um, Holiday Inn, up in Wormsworth, had a few chats, yeah. end of season, signed there, you know, yeah. sorted and never really thought it would take off how it did. Um, I know the club had aspirations, but certainly didn't realise, you know, the aspirations that they've got to yeah. where they are now, which has been fantastic, but, you know, to be a small part of that has been pretty good. Brilliant. So obviously the first season, do you want to talk quickly about your first season that you had at the club? Obviously just getting into things, obviously Nan up to the, the point of obviously winning the National League North player of the season, obviously scoring 14 goals in the league I think, obviously multiple assists as well. Would you say that's, do you want to quickly talk about your first season there? Yeah, so first season were a difficult one at Arica because we, again, I, I won't go into like budgets and stuff, but we wouldn't have been far off one of good ones in league. Yeah. And I think there were a lot of expectation above us because we'd kind of cherry picked quite yeah. a few good players, and we went in. And I think even us as players thought, yeah, we're going to stay yeah, in all yeah. this. And you know, two months into the season, it were like, well, yeah, wake yeah. up call. We're not actually as good as what we thought. Chase tail off it all season. Ended up finishing like nine for tenth, and it were like, wow, what's just happened here? Like for the quality we had in the dressing room, oh, sitting around tenth in Conference North, it were mental. Um, and then the second season, we did like a hybrid model where we did a Monday morning training session, yeah. Tuesday night, Thursday night, and we kind of just went completely different. We got rid of players that were had had bigger careers, yeah. and we just got like 
young, hungry lads yeah. in, and kind of everyone just bought into it, and it, it just flew off its shelves. To be honest with you, we we were fitter, stronger than most teams. Did really, really well. I think if Salford wouldn't have been in the league that year, I yeah. think we'd have definitely won it. I think we finished on you know ninety points. You went up right. anyway, though, didn't you? Yeah, we went up in the playoffs, which still fine, um, and it were one of the best days I've ever had in football, play final, but to get up to 90 points yeah. and not win a league yeah. you know it was difficult but they obviously you know the story behind Salford the cost yeah, of 92 yeah. they were back in that and they had a very good side as well and we us two very rarely lost unless we played yeah each other yeah um, but it were uh, that was that one of the most enjoyable seasons I've ever had and then obviously I got the, the player of the year for the league and stuff like that which obviously coincided with the most enjoyable year so obviously I want to quickly talk about obviously your role in that season because obviously Winning the National League North Player of the Season. Do you want to quickly talk about where you played? Do you know what I mean about yeah. where, did, where did you play? Where did you fit into that style? Obviously, was Simon Weaver there? Yeah, no. so Weaver was manager, first with the assistant, and it were it was just one of those. It were like, and I've not been for, I've always been fortunate to play most games wherever yeah. I've been. So I've always been quite a comfy footballer, and uh, it it was my undoing at Harrogate in the end. But that season, it was just. You turned up, you knew you were going to be playing. If you needed to have a training session off, if you felt too tired, they were great with you. They, yeah. they, you know, they, they really man-managed that group well um, that year, and, and especially me. They really looked after us, and, and it just paid dividends yeah. on pitch. You just felt happy. I, yeah. I, but if Carl School said, well, meet at eight, I want to meet at half seven, I just yeah. couldn't wait to get to football. It was like just a massive buzz to be around the place. And when, you, obviously, you're winning games and playing well, scoring or whatever, you do, you do, you do love football. Football's best job in the world if that's what you're doing. Would you say that playoff final was the best moment you've had in football so far? Yeah, definitely. They all, all different, I suppose, in certain things. Obviously, playing my football league debut were good, um, but the actual winning that final and and stuff like that, it was just a pressure game. Worked all year for it, and then we absolutely steamrolled the team in the final that we played, and it was just the night out after everything yeah. that had come with it. It was just what we deserved, you know what I mean? Brilliant. So going on to the obviously England C appearance, did that come off the back of winning that? Yeah, so um, the England C appearance I think was like a few months earlier than that or yeah. maybe even beginning of the season, yeah, yeah, yeah. a bit of back end of Alfred and early Arrogate uh, got called up to that and yeah, just everything that you can imagine, again, I ain't going to play for England first yeah. team or Man United or anything like that, um, I definitely know my level yeah. but the England C team, some people can, you know, laugh at it, snigger at it, whatever. And um, but yeah, just got the absolute vibe of what it would be yeah. to be a England, England football. You got looked after, fresh kit as soon as you walk through door. Everything were England branded or you know, there were no stones yeah. turned with it. It were brilliant. Old food were fantastic. Hotel were amazing. It were proper good. Really enjoyed it. So obviously. Did you, you obviously played against Slovakia, you played, yeah, yeah. you started as well, obviously what that experience like playing, obviously everyone, like you said, everyone could snigger at you, but you still ended up representing your country at, at a certain level, do you know yeah. what I mean? So obviously what was that experience like playing against Slovakia? Well, I, when I went down uh, with the England C team, I was a bit like, again, how has this happened? Yeah. You know, I'd had an all right season, but I certainly wasn't yeah. one of the best players in the league and one of the best players at the start of that season. Yeah. Um, I'd got the call up, I'd obviously impressed in the game, we goes down train. I didn't think I'd be starting or anything. Family weren't even going to come to the game and stuff like that. Um, and I'd actually cancelled a lads' holiday because I was going to a beef with boys. Yeah. And then I was like, lads, I don't think I can go. And I were even umming and ahhing whether to go on holiday do that because I didn't. I didn't yeah, know yeah. severity of it. I didn't know seriousness of it. So I was like, anyway, goes down. Done a few training sessions. Actually impressed in training. Done quite well. <laughs> I remember manager coming over saying. You know, you, you, yeah. you, you're good on the right wing, aren't you? You do play on the right wing. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah whatever you need yeah, me to yeah. do, mate. Like, yeah, 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 right wing, if you need me to do it there, I'll go there. I thought, I ain't saying I fucking play on left wing yeah. because I just wanted to start, you know. Yeah. Football's enjoyable if you're playing it, yeah, you don't yeah. want to watch it. Um, so I ended up England kit on, seven on yeah. back, singing national anthem, yeah. and I was like, this has just been a mad few days. Um, but we played Slovakia, it was their national team under 21s. So playing against players yeah. that were at top clubs in Europe and uh, yeah, really good experience. Some really good players have played against and held his own. So yeah, we're good. Still got that. You missed a beefer. <laughs> no, um, I think uh, I think the lads that were going with missed it because I'm. Uh, 
class clown, so uh, <laughs> you might have changed there all a little bit. But no, I ended up going to Magaluf, I think, straight after. Oh, I've got back from there. So, yeah, yeah, not too bad. Brilliant. So obviously, making that transition from obviously playing in the National League North to the National League, would you say there's a big difference in standard? Would you say? Massive differences in the, the the standard of the teams in the league. There's not many bad ones in the National League. Conference North, still similar. Now you have some well-stocked mm. top eight teams and then below. Still good teams, still good standard, but there is a difference yeah, between yeah. the top ones and the bottom ones, whereas in the National it is just well-stocked players. Right. John, let's obviously talk about, obviously you've, you've had this breakout season, uh, National League uh, North player of the season. Do you want to quickly talk about obviously where you where you fit in where you fitted in then in that new season? Yeah, I think you know probably going on to the rest of my Arrogate career. To be fair, I think at the start of it, I played 150 games in three yeah. seasons, played every minute of every game. Great relationship with the chairman, yeah. manager, assistant manager. Loved my time there. Couldn't have been happier. And then obviously as the club transitioned, pl better players come yeah. in, push you for your place and. At the time, I was, you know, doing well and keeping people out, and then he kind of dropped into a bench position, yeah. coming off the bench, starting one out for a couple, and that were basically my undoing in the end. I've always been a player that just want to play football. Yeah. Don't care. I'm not a football snob. I played at all the levels that you can think about moving up. I'll go back to them tomorrow. I'm not bothered. Yeah. Uh, but I just want to play football, and I couldn't handle. And this is probably something that I look back with a regret, to be honest yeah. with you. Is, I couldn't handle not playing. I couldn't handle yeah. playing one in three or one in two. I, I was like, well, I used to be a main man, me. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, why, yeah. why aren't I playing? You know, why aren't I scoring? Why aren't it me? Yeah. And that's that's an immaturity on my part that I look back on and go, should have been different there. Yeah. You, you sh you've let yourself down. Um, because I probably would have had a bit more longevity to my yeah. Harrogate career if I'd have done that. Uh, but I would just couldn't get my head round not playing. Couldn't get my head round not having a game of football on a Saturday or not being in squad yeah. and stuff like that so that's probably where I was kind of forcing myself to go and get games on yeah. other clubs. Would you say a lot of frustration came at that point in your career obviously it's never nice to not play football but did it affect you at all mentally would you say as well? Yeah massively I think from that part I think it's probably I've been only the last you know from when I joined Stevenage that I kind of got the love back for football. Yeah. I rushed into a loan move at Stockport County uh, which unbelievable club fan base six seven thousand every week the lads were fantastic there really enjoyed my time off the pitch but on the pitch I just I was just nowhere near myself I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't right mentally I wasn't right physically I was unfit I just couldn't handle the fact of like hang on I was yeah. thought in my head that yeah. I was this really good player you know yeah. it's conference north level so again not getting carried away because I know that conference north conference yeah. north it's not Premier League but in my head, I'd gone from playing every week, people retweeting your goals and yeah. stuff like that, to you know, fans messaging me saying you're rubbish, get out yeah, of our yeah. club, and you know what? At the time, I was like, oh, a bit harsh, but they're right. I, I went to Stockport and I was poor. I let myself down, and I, again, I just I wasn't in the space where I should have yeah. been to go and play in a team like that. So obviously, I know it's like, would you say there's more highs than lows though when you're for your time at Arrogate? For time at Arrogate, yeah, definitely. I look back on it now, I think are all the good times. Yeah. The dressing rooms that I played in, some fantastic memories that, you know, 90% of them I can't share on, yeah, <laughs> on air yeah. because they were just, yeah. you know, football's like stupid <laughs> banter. Um, but yeah, loved my time there. It's a shame that it ended as quickly yeah. as it did. Uh, but again, I have to take a big part of that because I was the one that was like, well, if I'm not playing, I need to leave. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Rather yeah. than being what I'd probably push on a lot of youngsters now is fight more for your position, don't roll over to it rather than just thinking, well, I should be playing at this yeah. level, so I'll go and play somewhere else. Poor from me on that part. Uh, but I got experiences out of that decision yeah. that I probably would never have got if I'd have stayed and been a squad player at Arrogate, so everything happens for a reason. So you're only actually 28 though, so it seems like you've been around ages. Yeah, yeah. But you're only 28, you're coming into your, your prime. Well, you, you could say that you're coming to your prime now, but it seems obviously because where you're at a young age playing at such top level non league clubs, would you say you've got still so much more to give in football? Yeah, I think I've always had aspirations of playing at however I can play, yeah. and I think most people that know me understand that I'm confident, and yeah. I've always been, like I say, turtles, yeah. say from 16 yeah. year old, I was probably knocking on his door, why aren't I playing? Yeah. 
Um, people can mistake that for big time, people can mistake that for arrogance. I don't think that is, I think it's just a lad that loves to play football. Yeah. And if I can carry on and go back into the football league and get back in it, well, that's course, I'd love yeah. to do that. Realistically, is that going to happen? I don't know, probably not. Uh, so I've got to prepare myself for, for other things as well. Um, last season I was a part-time footballer again, not a full-time footballer. Um, so again, not a football snob. If I'll play anywhere as long as I'm playing yeah. and enjoying it. That's what football's about. How, would, how did that affect you, obviously, going from, from a full-time footballer to, to part-time? Did you have to maybe go and, go and get a, uh, another job or did it affect you any, in, a, in any way? Yeah, well, over the last couple of years I've been fortunate enough that obviously I've been on my Harrogate contract yeah, yeah. and I've been getting out on yeah. loan, so technically full-time footballer, yeah, yeah. but been playing for part-time yeah, clubs. Yeah. So I've always had the financial yeah. security. But I've not been a stranger to working. I've you know coached at Bowlby Car when yeah, I left. Yeah. I did a few years there and kicks. I've jumped in and done some coaching. Coaching's a massive passion of mine, and that's what I want to do. Do you reckon you just quickly? Do you reckon you want to do that as well when your career? Would you, was that something you would like to do? Go into it, maybe academy coaching or non-league coaching? Or? I think for me, my pathway, what I'd ideally like to see is you know in the next couple of years getting a bit more responsibility within a dressing room, right. taking that you know coach role once I'm past 30 and then definitely would love and it's my ambition to manage at whatever level, I just love football so I want to be around it. Would you say that would be in more necessarily men's football? Yeah, 100%. Definitely. Um, I think the style that kind of, I am a bit old school, probably I had that when I came through it, like with Turner at 16, I was probably on the, the cusp of the generation changing, yeah, so yeah. I was still very old school. People told you what to do, you didn't say out oh, back, you were, you know, yeah. uh, and if you did, it ended up in an argument. Whereas now it's a bit more like the young lads have got a bit more free reign, don't have as much um, of, a, of a say in things and stuff. So, obviously, like Boston now, how are you enjoying your time there? How did you enjoy your time there? Yeah, Boston's, Boston's been great. Obviously, give me a bit of a a release from not playing and stuff because I was coming out Harrogate not playing just training and then uh, ended up going into Boston and I thought you know it was a good platform great club enjoyed it obviously hopefully you know they go on and do really well and yeah. I might go back with them I'm not sure uh, picked up a bit of an injury in pre-season so future still yeah. a bit unsure with football but never say never with Boston brilliant so we're going to move on to something a bit a uh, bit different now so We've got a list of, we're going to say best goalkeeper, best defender that you think you've played with, but we're going to do a quick fire. Mm -hmm. So, we tried doing this with Youngie, but Youngie like, going on about it for a minute, saying, oh, I don't know, I'll play with this, <laughs> this, this and that. No, Youngie, quick fire. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we're going to do a, a quick quick fire, so I'm going to name best goalkeeper you've played with, and you're going to just fire him off the bat. Yeah, yeah. Do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. Do you want a little explanation with uh, a name? It's up to yourself. I'll, yeah. I'll let you give a little explanation if there's a bit of a backstory behind it, if you want. Yeah, yeah. So we'll start off, best goalkeeper you played with? James Belshaw, without a doubt. Um, ridiculous professional. Won every run. Yeah. Won every race. Anything we did in pre-season. Absolute machine. And obviously, Even in goal? In goal. The fittest kid. Like, I'm talking 17 odd minute, 5Ks. <laughs> just a machine. Like, a freak of nature. This guy, when he come to, to fitness. Uh, and then... Uh, and then into his goalkeeping, just saying, shot stopper, fantastic. I think he's managed to get Bristol Rovers player at year this year. Yeah. He's in League League One now. He's absolutely flying, but fully deserves it. Brilliant. Full back. Full back. Probably Ryan Fallowfield when I were at Arrogate, like just ridiculous engine, up and down. For those levels that he were playing at, just at people alive. Really? Uh, so we've got full back. Best centre half, we'll go centre half. Um, Calamar. Calamau. Calamau, yeah. Calamau, another, boy. another yeah. local lad, yeah. yeah. One of my pals, so I'll give him a bit of a shout out. But no, Cal was good. Sticks his head on everything. Did you ever actually come against him? Uh, played against him once. He was. He went from Harrogate, he moved to Solihull in a bit of a plot twist move yeah. in pre season. Went to Solihull. We shared a car school and everything, and then he went there. But yeah, he's a, he's a top. Top player, Cal. Top player. He's uh, probably very underrated, if anything. Did you play? So you played with him for? Yeah, he came oh. to Harrogate. Had a full season at Harrogate with him. Car schooled with him. You know, like we've been best mates growing up, and then to be in the same team yeah. class. What season did he come in? And he came in when we first went up to the Conference National. Right. So he'd already been playing those levels. We'd got him. a Bit of a good signing for us. Um, and he and he was great. He went on to Solihull, and like I think he's skipper there now. You know, doing really well. So maybe yeah. playoff final as well, and he's yeah. doing really well. Yeah, he is. Centre mid. 
Centre mid. Yeah. Probably difficult this question yeah. for centre mids because like the leagues I've played in centre mids they're not like they're not like Thiago. Yeah. yeah. Get that ball and Rats, spray it yeah, all yeah, yeah. They just work as runners. Yeah. But again, probably bias because he's car school member but Lloyd Kerry yeah. at Harrogate just ran all over yeah. people you're horrible to play against if you're on opposite tide in training just do your head in just yeah. standing on your feet and all that yeah Lloyd Brilliant. winger winger um, Jack Diamond well, a bit of a yeah. bit of sweet one because he came in from Sunderland on loan and ultimately just pied me straight out of Harrogate because of how good he was uh, but like, I remember him coming in and he was just like this Young lad, and all that. I'm not really all to worry about. You get a little yeah. on trial, don't you? And then, like, first training session, you just go <laughs> top corner, and you're like, <laughs> and straight away, I think from that day, I was a yeah. bit like, I'm not gonna play him. <laughs> so, he was, uh, he was definitely one um, that was very, very good, and he'll have a very good career. He's still at Sunderland now, is he? Yeah, he's a, he's a top player. Striker, striker. I'll probably say for the season he had. Simon Ainge. Now, not the best yeah. footballer I've ever played with, but the year that I spent with him, he were a centre half. Yeah, yeah. Chucked him up front for a game, and I think in a calendar year there were probably only him and Harry Kane that yeah. had scored. You know, the amount yeah. of goals he had, it were ridiculous. He just had a freak of a season. Like I say, certainly not yeah, one yeah. of the best footballers I've ever played with, but um, as a goal scorer in that season, I probably have to give him that one. But I played with a couple of others: Mark Bett, Dom Knowles. Uh, Jordan Burrows that we Burrows, spoke about yeah. earlier, top top players. Brilliant. So now we're going to go into something different actually because I actually found out that you were on FIFA at one point. <laughs> Did you know that? Yeah. So well, I'm going to been worth picking. I'm going to go through your stats and I want, I want you to say if you agree with them or disagree with them. Okay. All right. So to be fair, your pace is your actually your strongest attribute. You say you've got a bit of pace. <laughs> no. no you, had very, you actually did have very good pace on it, by the way. No, no I'm definitely not known so, for me running. I think I'm going to overlay it here with, you, with your stat. So 75 pace, agree or disagree? Disagree. <laughs> disagree. 58 dribbling? Disagree. Disagree? Yeah, dribbling I'm all right. I can, can do a chop. And what would you say your best attribute was? Crossing. Crossing? Crossing and probably, yeah, crossing. Crossing. 44 shooting, I think they've been a bit harsh there. Yeah, yeah. that's harsh. That's you harsh. But good finisher, would you say, on your day? Both feet? No, I, I swack it. <laughs> if it goes in, it goes in top corner. If it doesn't, it clears Conifer. <laughs> that type of job. Got no finesse. Uh, 45 defending, did you ever. ever well, you, you said you played at fullback quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, I played fullback quite a lot. I think that's probably a bit harsh. Defending is probably one of my better ones, hence why I've probably not made it as a top winger because <laughs> I just run up and down, you know what I mean, rather than actually having. The best attributes to be the best wingers. Would you mind another spell at fullback? No, definitely not. I think like obviously I know people say she prime at 28, but when you're getting a bit older, I don't old mind dropping back to fullback or anywhere. I'd like to say I play play yeah. anywhere. Brilliant. 51 passing. I think crossing and yeah, crossing. Definitely crossing. I think I've got quite a few assists, so I back myself to cross it. You got a lot of assists in that season where we got National League Player of the Season. Yeah, yeah. well that was because Simon Ainge played up yeah. front and he was just an absolute tank that stuck his head on everything. Didn't even have to cross it mate, you just literally got the ball and just chipped it in the air and he just used to make you look a million dollars. And you got yourself in all set pieces as well didn't you? Yeah, yeah that's so right. Really it it free kicks, corners, so it helps. Brilliant. Last one, physical, what do you reckon? If you had to guess, I'll let you guess this one. Heavy armour for a winger, I'm 80 odd kilograms so... I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the strongest person in the world, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm not weak, so probably sixty. Sixty. Yeah, yeah. You got it. Bang on. Fifty nine. Sixty. But yeah, I'll, let, I'll give you that sixty. So I want to ask you now, just a quick one about your best car school moment. So I don't know if it's the best car school moment I've got because, like I said, you've got to keep things PG. <laughs> um, but I always remember as a young lad going in at Bradford. I don't know how this had come about, but I'd ended up cadging a lift with a couple of senior pros. They were Ricky Ravenhill, yeah. Matt Duke, Ross Anna, um, all proper lively characters, yeah. if you know any of them. Um, and on the way home from training one day, it was like an absolute scorcher yeah. day. Don't know why I've got like a Nike track suit on, probably because it were the only thing that yeah. were any good in my wardrobe. So I stuck this Nike trackie on, get a sink car, driving, I think, God, he's warm in here. Yeah. But like, he's cramped up in back, didn't want to take jacket off. Wow, yeah. I'm getting, getting warm, yeah. getting warm. Yeah. Anyway, they put my seat eaters on, yeah. and I've not known. They've got old blowers blowing on yeah. me. They're not put windows on. 
and like literally I got to the stage, but I was just an 18 year old, yeah. I didn't dare say out to anyone, I'm just sat in court, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting out or not. Literally, they're laughing their heads yeah. off inside. They'll have probably been taking piss out of it for weeks when I got <laughs> bombed off or whatever. And then uh, I remember just getting in the car with my dad. He's picked me up from me, point, white as a sheet. I'm like sweating my head off, whips <laughs> jacket off, whips top off. I'm like, I'm gonna be sick. I'm gonna be sick. Yeah. Just absolute burnt me up in car. So uh, that were that were one that I'll have to try and get him back with. Did you actually ever speak to him about that after? Yeah. So I ended up playing with Matt Duke at Alfred him straight away. Kevin changed. Oh, remember when we did that in yeah. car? Yeah. Obviously, I know Ricky through like Donny football yeah, yeah. and stuff like that, and he, he'll probably remember the story. And then obviously I played up against Ross, um, so I'm guessing he'll uh, he'll remember it. But it were uh, not the best experience, yeah. but it were a funny one. Brutal, brutal. I'm going to ask you now about obviously. Have you had any like unusual experiences with any ex-managers? Um, I remember when we were at Stevenage. I went under Graham Wesley. Um, and he was he were brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Give me a chance at football league. Loved loved my time with it. To be honest with you, uh, but he is a bit like Marmite uh, yeah, yeah. for a lot of people. Um, and I just remember us being in gym one day, and I think the physio were like a GB judo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'd lost on Saturday. We've come in. Next thing we're all doing judo in yeah. gym. We've got like a, a line across middle of the floor or middle of yeah. the floorboards or whatever it is. Everyone's in grapple, yeah. Wesley's watching us, you know, like, go on, go on, man, you're getting pulled yeah. about. Just getting chucked all over the gym. <laughs> Everyone was like, what is going off here? And then uh, he's done like a bit of a core circuit with the boys and uh, he was all mad about like, yeah. you don't give in, you don't give in, and he's got us all and he's crunching his sat there. He's, like, <laughs> he's got his track in yeah. there, slick back, and he's just going bam, bam, and gets to about 300 sit ups. I looks over yeah. and he's still going, he's still going, <laughs> he's doing everything. And then um, we um, we went into the, the the dumbbells, he's got everyone, he's handing dumbbells around, and we're all walking around with dumbbells above yeah. his head like this. And he's going, you don't drop him, you don't drop him, get him up, get him up. And we're all like, obviously I'm just like so grateful at chance to be in football league. I'm like, getting dumbbell above me head, doing every sit up that I could. And I'm just like, what is going on? But um, no, definitely, he was one that was a massive character, but definitely like Marmite. Brutal. Yeah. Brutal. Right, next one. I just want to quickly ask you now, because obviously you've, you were brought up obviously playing 16, you played went straight into men's football and stuff like that. How different is it now to the new generation of players like yourself and someone like yourself who's been around it for, for ages? Yeah, probably a bit like Youngie that came on last week, like he'll have seen it all. He'll have, yeah. he's, he's working with young lads now at Rosso and similar with me, like I came in at 16 and it were like, I'm not getting a shower, I didn't want to get in shower with men, it were like, you're getting in shower, yeah. like it's, it's shower, you don't go home with muck on you, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. get in and get lobbed in shower. Um, even to like kind of playing, like I, I've had it at corners when I was first coming through, like people trying to squeeze your knackers, yeah. you know, pulling your tallywhacker. And I think one game I remember a couple of years back, someone's, someone's gra trying to grab me, I'm trying to grab the referee's blows whistle, we're both in floor, yeah. we're both trying to grab each other's private parts just because like doing old yeah. to like, it would just be, it were meant. How old were you at this point then? I'd have been like low twenties, but it were like it were in the game. It were like you're at a corner, people nipping your underarms, getting your little digs in ribs. But like yeah. now, it seems to. I remember last season. I can't remember who we played, and I won't name kid anyway. But like, come on, it's like, hey, mate, you're right. You know, you're playing against yeah. someone. Like, it's changed, on it? Conversation in, in in game. Whereas, like I say, you're running around and people are getting your little digs off at ball, yeah. and you were like 18, 17 year old kid. If you, I felt a bit scared, a bit yeah. intimidated, you know what I mean? It put you off your game, but I'd that's have how they did it. I'd have 100% been intimidated, because like you said, it's changed so much, I think, as well, because if someone were like to do that to me when I was your, like the age you were, I'd have crumbled straight away. I always remember when I were at Winterton, we played Stavely and we played the centre-half, who were no-nonsense heading, but literally, I run to running channel, smack across thing, yeah. went to nip something, you come off and you were just like, you scared little kid, yeah. you, didn't, you didn't want ball, you were all like, ball coming this way, you were running that yeah. way, you know what I mean? But it's how you learn, isn't it? Sometimes I'm, I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying it's the best way, but it's what happened. You've probably noticed that change over the years, haven't you? As well? Yeah, definitely. Like I say, you've got young lads now that come in in dressing room. They've, they've never cleaned a boot. They've never yeah. done things like that. And, and I was on the like the tipping bit of it. I'm not saying I was like scrubbing dressing yeah, rooms yeah. to what like you know some of the older generation have done. But I certainly got a bit of both yeah. sides of it with the age I'm at. Yeah. So you say a little bit more spoon fed when you yeah, say yeah. you could say that, couldn't you? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Next one now, so we'll go for the last one. This is a funny one. You actually nearly signed for Salford. Yeah. Um, Do you want to quickly talk about that? 
Yeah, it, obviously it was nice because obviously everyone knew the hype around Salford yeah. class of 92. I was having the good season at Harrogate. They'd come in, um, put like a bit of a cash offer on table for Harrogate. The manager had spoke to me, do you want to go? I'd kind of got whispers of what I was going to get offered there. Yeah. It, was, it, it was more money than what I were on, so I was like, yeah, definitely yeah. wanted to do it. I think it were, you know, probably take money aside. The opportunity to go and play for a team that's owned by Gary Neville, yeah, yeah. Bex, you know, Scolds, it was like, they were all your group, your yeah, heroes, yeah. weren't they, do you know what I mean? So, jumped at the chance, speaking to the manager, he kind of left me out of the squad for Harrogate, right, you, you know, he's kind of going, you're going Salford. Spoke with the guy that were looking after me at the time and he was like, come down to my house, I'm Manchester based, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So, I, I'm in car, like, and I don't know if you watch the documentary, but it's like, Blue jeans, like yeah, blasted yeah, yeah. out, he called like money talks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm gonna be, you know, next big thing. Salford Bex is gonna love me. We were never gonna happen. Yeah. Um, I'd have probably not even got in starting eleven. <laughs> but in my head, this yeah, were yeah, all yeah. going on. I'm gonna be next Joey Beckham. You know what I mean? And uh, so I'm driving down there. I think I'd even bought some like red vapors yeah, to go yeah, in yeah. kit, <laughs> which I took some stick at. So I've, I've bought these new boots. I'm going down, and every hour went by, I'm not heard out. Yeah, you're still coming in, you're going to do training or whatever, yeah, another hour went by. Gets to like four o'clock, phone rings, deal's off, Harry get pulled out of it. Like, oh. So, driving back up M1, you know, <laughs> probably James Blunt or something yeah. playing, just like, <laughs> didn't really know what was going off, but to be fair to Harry, they were great, pulled me in, spoke to me, explained the situation, don't really know ins and outs of it, but deal didn't happen. Still got promoted with Harrogate that season, but took a lot of stick. All oh, worked out well. Took some stick for the red vapours with the Harrogate kit because I thought I'm going to have to wear them. Did though. you have to change them? <laughs> no, I, had to, I kept them because they were 100 no quid. I couldn't afford them. I don't know why I got them. I think I just got that excited of getting well, a kit. You know what I mean? Your best season, wasn't it? Yeah, it? that's it. So I ended up with them, and yeah, like I say, a few Harrogate boys were like, What have you bought? You know, like <laughs> thinking you were going there. I took some stick for a good couple of months about that. Like, Oh, you thought you were going there and you're going to. But no, I. Obviously everything happens for a reason, we got promoted that season, one of the best days I've ever had. I'm just going to quickly talk about uh, aspirations, good, obviously, that you yeah, returned, that. I think, uh, working on. Yeah. Uh, do you want to quickly talk about that? Yeah, so, kind of had a few interesting chats with Turn, obviously, coming out of professional football, into back into non-league, um, need a job, yeah. um, need, to, need to work, and it's an exciting venture that I'm looking forward to, it's probably going to go live in a couple of weeks, but... Uh, setting up something called Resilience. Yeah. It's going to be basically just a, a mentoring program for, for young athletes, young sports professionals across the country, a age range from 16 onwards, just to kind of help a bit the story that I've had of setbacks and all the things that come along with football and just trying to help people mentally deal with yeah. those situations that will come up in the in the next few years of their life. So just being someone that they can lean on and for experience and have a chat with. Do you reckon that's something that's more needed in football? Yeah, I think it's massive. I think the dropout rate in football is astronomical. Oh, you know, the, the, the percent of making it is yeah. absolutely ridiculous. And I don't even mean like making it for Man United. Yeah. You'll know players that will play at Fawn or Rosso that yeah. are good footballers and you sometimes think, like, why are you playing there? Or yeah, yeah. Why are you doing that? Or why are you just play Sunday League? And it's probably because they've had a couple of hurdles that they've not yeah. been able to get over and then they've just jacked it. Um, so hopefully can give something back in with my experiences because not a diamond, I've, I yeah. have chucked my teddies out at Pram but I've learnt a lot so yeah. hopefully can go in and uh, give somebody a bit of help. Do you reckon this and an aside with coaching is something that you want to carry on when you hang him up? Yeah, 100%. Like I say, this new venture that I'm going into, I'm going to throw everything into this and it's a real passion of mine. I don't think there's enough in it in football so something that I really want to do. Um, but coaching, like I said earlier, Definitely want to be a football manager, so uh, hopefully progress as it goes on and uh, hopefully get a chance one day. Brilliant. So are you back at Boston next year then, do you think you will be? Or can you not announce anything yet? No, it's, it's not that I can't announce it, it's just obviously um, I've still, I, I did my MCL at the end oh. of last season, so <clears throat> only came out of the brace um, two weeks ago, so back running and everything yeah. now. So once I get a bit further along with that, I'll know more about it. So. I've spoke with a couple of clubs, but nothing concrete as of. Brilliant. Um, how did the, how was the injury coming on? All right. Yeah, yeah, good, mate, yeah. good. So, like I said, not 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 be too too far off now. Hopefully, back for the start of the season. Brilliant. So to finish off with, a few we've um, obviously we put out some questions, didn't we? Yeah. Um, got, got a few funny ones, to be fair. Um, to finish off, we're going to go some quick fire questions off 
obviously people that have asked some questions. Um, a few funny ones, like I said. Jay Belly 31, do you know him? Yeah. He's asked, what's his favourite song to sing in car school? <laughs> so You've uh, had that many, surely. Yeah, so we, when we were at Harrogate, um, Lloyd Carey was worst tasting music, so he put on Take That album or whatever, <laughs> and, and one day, I think it was called The Flood, next thing we're all belting it out and thing. I'm Jason Orange in background, <laughs> chucking it out, he's Gary Barlow, we're absolutely firing tunes out in car, but... I don't think anybody expected four middle-aged 20-year-olds <laughs> to be belting out the flood by take that. Would have been a funny sight though, wouldn't it? <laughs> no. It would have been a funny sight. <coughs> Callum Hurl, know him? Mm. No, I don't. Oh, I think he, he put. Did he enjoy his time at Arrogate Town following his National League North Player of the Pri uh, Player of the Year prize? Obviously, we did go on a bit about that. Yeah, love, love, loved Arrogate. Loved my time. Obviously, sad that it ended as, as promptly as it did, but yeah, fond memories of that club. Um, Jaden Sargent, he said, can you come back to Boston? <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, never say never with Boston. Yeah. It's a club that I love being there. I loved, loved uh, all my time there. The lads are there at class. So if I could go back to them, I'm sure I'd uh, jump at the chance. Brilliant. Brad Grayson, one of your close pals. Uh, yeah. Bit of a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, great. He said, I, I've, I've told you this question already, but he said, how long in centimetres is his nose? Yeah, I've took some stick. And this side profile yeah. of the cat is probably <laughs> not doing me any favours, but... Yeah, I've got a big nose and uh, I think Grace has spent a few years letting everybody know that it's a big one as well. <laughs> Classic Grayson. Uh, on to the next one. Um, off. Wait, we've got a funny one off. Um, I forgot his name now. Brett Lucas. Hi. He said if you don't say he's not the... Uh, he said he is... Oh, I'm stuttering everywhere. Is he the best centre-half that you've played with? And if you say <laughs> that he's not, he won't be happy. Brett, when he was younger, I remember playing against him when I was like 14, 15, just absolute man mountain. I think he was at Derby at the time, ridiculous, just like, yeah, yeah very good at that age. And then uh, I think he did his YT at Donny and that, and he was good. Uh, but I kind of didn't play with Brett or against him until like after a young yeah. age. He's still playing now, he's back at form. Is, is, he, is he getting his boots back out? Is he going well, for it? Yeah? He, he knows deep down, but because obviously I've done a uh, pre season for him as well, and he's bottled every single run. <laughs> He'll always say, oh, my calf's gone or something like that, but every single run he's managed to bottle, believe it or not. Yeah, no one likes pre-season. No, so <laughs> he needs to sort his head out, Brett, because, <laughs> do you know what I mean? He's, he's not going to get fit, is he, if he doesn't do his runs, so. Um, I'm going to make a, a big, bold, uh, bold prediction to finish with. Um, so, wherever you play next year, do you think, obviously, 28 years of age, how long do you reckon you've got left in the tank? I think with... With the type of player I am, I think I can play for as long as yeah. my body will let me play because I think I can filter in either and everywhere. Like I say, I'm, I love football, so I don't ever see myself going, oh, I'm not playing in Conference North yeah. anymore. I'm not going to I'm not gonna play. I'll play for the local yeah. team if I can do. Yeah, As long as I'm uh, enjoying it and that, I'll definitely carry on. Brilliant. I appreciate your time, mate. Um, Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. A lot of people don't want to do stuff like this. Do you know I mean, no one likes being on the camera and it is difficult. I even still find it difficult now not to stutter or anything yeah, like yeah. that. But I appreciate you coming on, mate, as well. Um, good luck with the venture, that resilience. I think it's perfect. I think it's much more needed in football, obviously. I'm mean, not sure to, to go back on someone to speak to because, like I said, the, the percentages are very slim if you make it or not. Yeah, yeah. And, but, yeah, I wish you the best of luck with that, mate, as well. And wherever you are next season. Um, yeah, so yeah cheer, thank, mate. Thank thanks, thanks for coming on, pal. No, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. There'll be an announcement, obviously, about who's on next. Um, but yeah, s stay tuned for that. I can't announce it just yet because they haven't confirmed. But um, but yeah, thanks to yourself again, mate. Appreciate it, and I'll see you all um, on the next next episode. Cheers, Paul.